Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist that I'm building with the Godot engine. I'm excited to kick off today's episode because I'm starting development of a feature that I've been looking forward to building, or I should probably say rebuilding, since undertaking the effort to upgrade Dauphin for use with Godot 4.0 when it was released many months ago. This feature is of course sailing, absolutely core to Dauphin as it will be the mechanism that allows the player to travel between islands and just explore the open ocean, fishing and diving wherever they please or maybe where an NPC has hinted that there might be a point of interest. What you're seeing now is my first attempt at this feature probably close to a year ago at this point. I won't go into too much detail apart from saying that this implementation did not make the conversion from Godot 3 to Godot 4. It's going to be a lot of effort to convert the way I was procedurally generating the ocean at this point. And as you can probably tell from this footage, both the artwork and gameplay were very clunky. It was a good learning experience that I will take with me as I build out V2. So with all that said, I'm excited to jump in and get started on this rebuild. But before I do, I think I need to spend some time getting y'all caught up on what I've been doing these past few months. Unfortunately, you may have noticed that it is almost June at this point, and I've only released two Dauphin devlogs so far this year, which was certainly not the plan at the beginning of the year. Bad news is I haven't had a lot of time to film, as you can obviously tell, but the good news is that I've made consistent progress on my goal to improve Dauphin's visuals since the start of the year, so I have a lot of cool stuff to show you. When we last caught up, I was working on building out a weather system for Dauphin, which I'm happy to say is in great shape. In the past few weeks, I have taken the weather effects that I built out for the overworld islands and adapted those to Dauphin's underwater scenes, meaning that, for example, if it's raining on an island and you dive out in the surf, it will be raining on the surface of the water. If the sky is darkened by certain weather conditions, you'll also find it to be darker underwater. On the topic of underwater lighting, I've also improved lighting effects within dive site scenes to respond to the water's depth, basically meaning that as the player dives deeper, less light penetrates from the surface as it does in the real world, requiring the player to have a light source of their own. Apart from these and many other tweaks, the most exciting thing I've been working on is sound effects, something I've been neglecting for a very long time. The weather system was a great place to get some practice in here with Logic Pro. I have a very long way to go when it comes to building more sound design skills, but even having something in place makes Dauphin feel so much more alive, which has been a wonderful feeling. Really since the start of this year, I've been channeling all my efforts into making Dauphin's world feel more like a world that's actually alive and worth exploring. And I of course have so much work left to do when it comes to art and sound and world design in general, but I am really happy with the progress I've made so far this year. and. More than that, I'm excited to get back to what I consider to be one of my stronger suits, which is architecting new features. Speaking of new features, let's finally jump into sailing. We'll chat more as I make progress with development, but for now the plan is to preserve my initial vision for this system, which would allow the player to sail from anywhere to anywhere, stopping as they please to explore, dive, or fish. As a reference, I'd love to get closer to what Sea of Stars has accomplished here, which looks similar to what I had in mind while obviously being orders of magnitude more beautiful. I think I'll start today by redrawing the eight directional sprites I'll need for the sailboat while keeping them quite a bit smaller than my initial take to one, hopefully make that easier, and two, create a more zoomed out perspective while you're sailing. Hey everyone, quick update. After just a few hours, I'm very pleased to say I was able to do a complete overhaul of the set of sprites required for my sailboat as you sail around in the ocean. I think it's been a huge improvement. So just for context, here was my previous set of sprites. You can see as I step through them, I definitely got the perspective wrong on some of these pivots and it just contributed to the overall clunky feeling of trying to sail this ship around in the ocean. After downsizing this significantly and starting from scratch, I have a much cuter and I think better perspective and better balanced set of sprites for this sailboat and I'm really excited to pull this into the game. Unless I get some kind of second wind here, I think I'm going to put that off until tomorrow morning. Today is actually Memorial Day, and I've had the day off of work, which is awesome, but I've spent most of that so far editing the start of this video, and of course working on the artwork that you just saw. So I think I'm going to take the rest of the afternoon off and relax. We'll catch up in the morning.
everyone, quick update. It's been a very productive week so far, happy with the progress I've made, but I have hit a bit of a snag and I wanna talk about that because I think it's gonna be an interesting problem to solve. But first I'll get you caught up because the context of what I'm working on is gonna be important. So we'll start here looking at a very simple piece of artwork that's meant to represent Dauphin's ocean and in the future all of the islands and various points of interest that will make up this ocean and game world. If we zoom in to the top left corner, you can see a rough outline of the island that we've been looking at for a few episodes now ever since I kind of did the island overhaul, as well as my little boat sprite for scale just to make sure I'm making something that's going to look kind of nice here. Now this is just grayscale at this point with no detail because I actually want to use this piece of artwork in the same way that I'm using the noise textures that I'm generating during island building. And the reason I want to have kind of a grayscale effect here with varying levels of opacity is to represent the water's depth so that I can apply that same really cool water shader that I use on the islands to the open ocean and get that same nice visual effect. So I have a lot of work to do here, obviously, even just refining what I have so far for this island, but this is ultimately what's gonna be driving how I build the ocean scene in the game using this as the template. To consume this resource and ultimately build the ocean, I have a new ocean scene here, and you can already see some of that building logic at work. I have a tile map here as a child of this ocean scene, and you can see I've passed in this texture as an export here. And what's going on under the hood is that I am using the information and the opacity layers in that texture, passing that to a tile map using a couple terrain sets, just like I'm doing for the islands, and ultimately trying to build out the ocean scene. You can see here, we just have a very small chunk representing the top left corner. If I start to move the research vessel around here, which is currently in the middle of this square, we'll see two things happening. One, it's starting to change the portion of the ocean that's being rendered. But two, and this is ultimately the problem I'm working against, it is very stuttery. I really cannot do this either in the editor or at runtime without having major stutters when trying to update this tile map and connect the cells associated with these terrains. So this is what we need to solve. I've tried a few things to solve this problem already. I have moved my logic to build the tile map, pretty much everything except for actually drawing the tiles to a separate thread. I have tried building a second copy of the tile map outside of the scene tree and swapping it in and I've tried just building the entire map all at once on scene load. All of these either still stuttered or just took way too long. So what to do about all this? At the end of the day, I do have some options in my back pocket. I could load up the entire map at once on game initialization and just keep it in memory until I need it so I'm not doing a bunch of building at runtime. Or I could actually have the player do real scene transitions between the chunks of the ocean as they're sailing. If I do load things up all at once, it's just gonna hog up the player's memory on their machines, and if I do these scene transitions, it's gonna make sailing a lot less immersive, but these are practical solutions to the problem. That said, I do wanna see if I can do something better. With one last attempt at asynchronous loading, I'm gonna try and make each chunk of the ocean its own standalone scene that I can then instantiate on a background thread and just add to the scene tree back on the main thread when I need to update based on the player's sailing position. I'm hoping that will alleviate the performance cost required with trying to connect cell terrains on the main thread at runtime, but that still might be happening under the hood when I try to add this tile map to the scene tree. So I don't really know, but I wanna try it and see how it goes. I am going to jump into that this afternoon and I'll get back to you when I have an update. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been about a day or so since the last update and I'm very happy to report that I think I have figured it out. I'm able to smoothly load chunks of Dauphin's ocean as the player sails across it without any kind of stutters or transitions. So let's jump in and take a look and I'll show you how it works. So first we'll take a look at this in action and we'll start here on the beach so that we can see how quickly we're able to actually load up that open ocean scene. So we'll head onto the research vessel here and interact with the map to set sail. And pretty much right away, we load into the ocean scene, which is great. And if I zoom really, really far out here, 
we can see that in fact the entire ocean scene is not loaded. Instead, we have just a few chunks here as you might expect. Now this might be kind of hard to see for the demo, but as we start to move the research vessel across, we will see the rendered chunks update. And to my delight, it's happening without any kind of slowdown or freezing or stuttering as it was before. Now if I zoom back out again, you'll notice that the way I'm doing this is loading basically a bunch of chunks around the player. Specifically, we have nine chunks active at any given time. We have the center or focus chunk, which is the one the player is inhabiting, and we have eight chunks around the outside, and those are all updated every time the player leaves the focus chunk and enters a new adjacent chunk, basically making it the new focus chunk. The way I ended up achieving this is pretty much exactly the method I said I wanted to try when I set out to build this yesterday, and that is instead of trying to update a giant ocean scene at runtime by changing the cells rendered on a tile map, I just have the ocean broken out into a bunch of separate chunks, each of which are their own scene. The important thing about this is that all the tile map work can be done basically at build time within the individual scenes, and at runtime, when we need to update the chunks, all we're doing is taking these preloaded scenes and adding them to the scene tree rather than trying to call set cell terrain at runtime, which is what was causing those slowdowns. Within these individual ocean chunks, we of course have the tile map that's responsible for rendering itself based on that same notion of the height map texture that we were talking about before, but the ocean chunk also maintains the responsibility of signaling out when the research vessel enters its bounds, and this is used by the overall ocean scene to determine which chunks to render. And here's a look inside my ocean scene where I'm pretty pleased that things are actually not too complicated in here. I think all the interesting stuff that we would care about is happening in my render surrounding chunks function, which is a function that I call passing in an ocean coordinate, which just represents the coordinate of the chunk that the player just entered. As you'd expect here, we keep a list of the coordinates that we now want to build, including the one that the player just entered and the eight surrounding tiles, as we just talked about. We scrub out coordinates that are outside the bounds of our map. We remove old rendered coordinates that might not be a part of the new set that we want to render, just to clean up memory. And then of course, we actually build and render those new chunks. And as I mentioned before, I really think the magic here is that all we're doing is adding a preloaded scene to the tree instead of making calls to update a tile map at runtime. I believe this is why this is working so well. I was kind of worried that this was going to be a problem that had me pulling out my hair for a whole week, so I'm very glad to have it behind me at this point. Now that we do have full access to the ocean, I can finally get to the fun stuff, dropping anchor at new islands or even out in the middle of the water to explore deeper dive sites than I've ever been able to play with so far. That said, at the time of this recording, it is Sunday afternoon and I have been grinding all day so far, so I'm going to take the afternoon off and get back to it first thing tomorrow. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is now Wednesday morning. Just wrapped up some last minute development and a quick workout, and I think we're ready for the final update of the episode. I know I said it was time to get to work on dropping anchor and exiting the sailboat, but after realizing that this devlog has been in progress for two weeks at this point, I decided just to try to clean up what I have so far for one last visual update, and that's what we're looking at here. Even though the above water portion of my island still needs a lot of work, I'm pretty stoked about the way the shoreline and surrounding water turned out. Just like my full size islands that the player can actually explore on foot, none of the underwater features or changing water opacity that you saw are things that I placed manually by hand. Rather, all of those things are computed and drawn for me based on a height map that represents the island. And this is the height map of the island that we were just looking at. The pure black color represents the portion of the island that's above water, and everything that's lighter than that represents an underwater portion. So what I can do is look at the luminance value of these individual pixels to determine how deep the water is and what organisms I should draw 
and what opacity to make the water above it. If you want to do something like this yourself, it's pretty easy to set up. Of course, you need the tile map on which you're going to do all of the drawing. And in my case, as I mentioned before, I drop in the texture 2D as an export kind of injected dependency for the tile map. And inside the tile maps code, I have a helper function down here at the bottom called height at position. And all this is doing is looking at the individual pixel on that height map image that I've passed in and calling the function provided by Godot called get luminance. And this is gonna provide a value between zero and one, which is perfect for a height map. Where this is called is up here in my draw ocean function where I'm looping through the entire size of the tile map that I want to draw. And I'm grabbing that height right at the beginning of each of these iterations to determine what tiles to draw. I think it's safe to say that the glow up from my old sailing system to my new one is a success. Using this height map approach across all of Dauphin's playable aquatic scenes makes them feel more connected, which is exactly how I want the world to feel. If you want to see pretty much all the code that I wrote during this devlog, I do post GitHub gists over on my Patreon page, so you can go check that out if you're interested. And that is a great transition into thanking the folks who do support this channel and Dauphin's development on Patreon. My Grammy supporters this month are Jess Zargo and Samuel SVD. I really hope y'all enjoyed this episode. I definitely had a very enjoyable past two weeks making all this progress, and I'm excited to share what comes next. I'll see you in the next video.